Hello, crafty friends. My name is Jessica, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I have a series for you that I'm hoping to get off the ground where I am taking trios from the Simon Says Stamp Positively Saturated Inks and doing some ink blending so that I can share my love of these inks for one, but also to show you how beautifully they blend. So this is the first trio. We're gonna do bubblegum sweets and taffy. And then I'm gonna pair them with some other inks that might be kind of unexpected for some people. We've got some blues, some greens, and some oranges. And all of these colors pair really well with these first trio. Now, I couldn't talk about ink blending without talking about my favorite ink blending paper. This is Simon Says Stamps 130 pound cardstock, and it is the best ink blending paper I have ever had. So I went ahead and cut down four panels to the A2 size, and then I'm gonna go ahead and get started just by showing you this first trio and how they blend so beautifully together. So a little bit about the positively saturated inks from Simon Says Stamp. They are a dye-based ink, but they are also water reactive. And what that means is that they react to water. So whether you splatter or spatter, water onto the surface or any kind of liquid, the color underneath is going to turn lighter when it dries. So this is a really fun technique if you're trying to create a snowy background and you want a little bit of definition before you go ahead and splatter, spatter, white paint on top to give that dimension of different color tones in your layers. And because this is 130 pound cardstock, it takes liquid really, really well. So I have watercolored on this after inking. I have spattered slash splattered. Uh, and it just, it does a really great job holding up to liquid. Back to the ink blending. I find that less pressure is best when you're going from a light color to a dark color. So as you saw, I was really light handed with the bubble gum. And then I got to a point where I knew I wanted to add the sweets. And so I went ahead and started adding the sweets. The thing to remember is you can always add more ink. You can't take it back. So that's why I like to go light handed with my light color to my medium. And then once I've gotten those colors pretty good, I tend to go a little bit heavier with my dark because I know I want that dark saturation at the bottom of this panel. But just remember that you can always add ink. You cannot take it away. So a lighter hand is best. I have a pretty standard method when I'm laying ink down for my ink blends. I typically start with the lightest color and work my way to the darkest. I start with a the soft layer first, move into the second color, and then jump back and forth until I get that very nice transition. As you can see here, this is a beautiful transition between all three of these colors. But... If you let this set and the more it dries, the smoother it's going to lay back that color and that transition is going to be even better. Because of the type of paper and the type of ink, it does take a while for the color to smooth back out. So that's the first panel done. I'm going ahead and cleaning up. I like to rub all of my brushes off at the end of use so that it takes off that color for the next round. Now we started with bubblegum, sweets, and taffy. We're gonna move into cheeky sweets and mandarin. This is a orangey pink into that hot pink into a bright orange. This color combo is probably my favorite out of all of the four that I'm going to be doing today, but I'll let you make that decision once we get to the end. I like to use my squeaky clean on my waffle flower grip mat. It cleans up very, very well. I will say a lot of people don't like the fact that stamps stain and this waffle flower mat is a clear polymer so it's just like our photopolymer stamps and so it does stain but to me that just shows it's a well-loved tool in our craft room and so I really don't mind it. So we're going to start with the cheeky that like pale orange pinky color and I'm going to go ahead and put down my first layer of the ink. I wanted to show you there real quick. This is how I hold my brushes. I find that this is the best way for me to not be heavy handed and push too hard on the brush handle. I have snapped a brush handle before from a previous set of brushes that I've used. So I found that when I grip around the head of the brush, one, I have more control on my pressure. And two, I feel like I have more control over the brush head. One thing I do want to mention is somehow, and it's probably from my fingers, you can see that little white dot in the middle of the cheeky panel. 
sometimes, and I think it's oil, comes off onto the paper while I'm ink blending. So typically when this happens and I can't get that white spot to cover, I'll use that water reactive technique and spritz water onto the panel so that it kind of hides it and makes it look more intentional. Another technique I like to do is this tapping off of the ink. While I find that this paper allows for you to smooth in brush strokes, there is certain paper types where brush strokes are going to happen. And so I like to tap off to get most of the ink off and then bring it to paper so that I avoid those brush marks that are pretty common with using these brushes. Now, as you can see, this panel looks great, if I do say so myself, but it is going to dry back and look even smoother as I continue on through the video. Now we do a little quick clean and I move on to the next trio of colors. I did pre-plan these colors, so the next one up is bubblegum, lemonade, and celery. These are some of the softest colors in the positively saturated ink line. And you're going to see that the celery and the lemonade are going to feel like they're the same color on video, but I promise you that they look more distinct in person. Back to the blending brushes, I do use one color brush per color family when I'm inking. So anything that has a pink hue, I use a pink brush and anything that leans yellow, I'll use the yellow. And I just wipe them off in between uses and sometimes before I even get started to ensure that I'm not carrying over the old ink into the new ink. I also find that, in my opinion, I have more success blending dye inks with brushes versus the blending foam tool that became really popular with the oxides, or at least I felt like it came with the oxides. I do like using a blending foam with my oxides, but I have also transitioned into having a separate set of brushes for my oxides that are separate from my dye inks. I will say though, also in my opinion, I mix dye inks no matter what type they are. So with dye inks, you can have non-reactive and reactive to water. And I mix those on the same brushes. I understand there are people that wouldn't do that. I have not found a issue with using the same brush as long as I go off on the paper in between. So what I mean by that is I have the original Simon Says Stamp ink line. That is a non-reactive dye ink. And I blend seamlessly between those inks and the positively saturated inks, which are water reactive. I use the same brushes. This panel's almost done. And as you can see, the camera is not picking up quite the distinction between the yellow and green. But what I really loved about this color combo is the bubblegum to lemonade. It made this beautiful, soft, pale orange color when I blended them together. And that's what's really neat about ink blending is you can start with three colors, but by the end of your blending, you might have five because the colors in between shine through when you blend them. This next trio will really show you that. So it's taffy, ocean, and Aegean, some of my favorite regal colors in the positively saturated line you're going to see when I blend these that it's going to create some colors in between that are really, really fun and unique. And these might be colors that you don't currently have in an ink pad. So the possibilities are endless in creating new color combos and new colors with these inks. I will say this is the color combo that you're going to be most surprised by, at least I think you will be, by the end on how it dried back. It kind of looks a little splotchy when I come to the end of the blending, but at the very end, I do a lineup of all the panels and you can see how smooth the ink looks. You can take a heat gun to your ink panel after it's all done to speed up that process, but I found that forcing it to speed up makes it almost lighter. I don't know if that's real science or not, but I have found when I speed up these inks, Using a heat gun, it almost saps the color out of it and makes them more pale. Again, it could be in my imagination, but just to be on the safe side, I let them sit and air dry before I go ahead and get started on any kind of technique on top of them. 
Now, who is a 90s babe? These colors are screaming Barbie to me, 90s Barbie. I grew up in the 90s, loved Barbie, but this taffy and ocean combo with that purple in between, absolutely 90s Barbie, 100%. Speaking of that purple color in between, that is just by blending taffy and ocean. So as I stated previously about how you can get new colors by just blending two colors, it's amazing how that works. That is not a color that I currently own in this line or probably in my other line as well. And it's so unique and fun that these two colors created a whole new color for me. While I'm finishing up, I want to draw your attention to the panels in the upper right hand corner. Have you noticed they look a little bit different or is it just me? If they look different, leave me a comment down below telling me how they look different and why you think they look different. I've kind of mentioned it a couple of times here throughout this video, but I'm curious what you think. Now that we're finished with this panel, you're going to see that the green and the blue didn't really make that third color, but that taffy and the ocean definitely made that beautiful purple. Quick cleanup before I lay the panels out and go through them one by one. I love this mat, like I said before, and I'm really excited that Waffle Flower came out with it because it just makes my ink blending so great. Now we're going to get back to the original panel here. Again, this is a trio on Simon Says Stamps Positively Saturated Ink. You can buy it in a group of three or you can buy them individually, and all of these inks come with a re-inker. This is Sweets to Bubblegum to Taffy, a lovely color combo for Valentine's Day. Then we're going to go in with Cheeky, Sweets, and Mandarin, a beautiful sunset combo that would be great for any kind of silhouette die cutting or stamping. Then we're going to go into Bubblegum, Lemonade, and Celery. A little bit more here. You can see that that green's shining a little bit brighter. And then we're going to finish it with the Taffy to Ocean to Aegean. I hope you guys learned something new today or maybe just learned how great these inks are. And I want to take some time to thank you for visiting. Be sure to leave me a comment below on what your favorite color combo is. And again, thanks for joining me and take care.